Hello everyone, here is Munir Alazuzi from easymedicaldevice.com and I want to celebrate today the 100th episode of the podcast. So it's 100 episodes, you can imagine. So here is a wall with all the pictures of the episode. So uh, it's a virtual wall <laughs> where, um, where uh, you can see that, yeah, there was really a lot of uh, episodes, a lot of people also that participated to this, uh, to this podcast. And I really want to thank them all because without them, this podcast couldn't have happened. Uh, so the idea of today is mainly to not uh, celebrate that alone. Uh, so I asked some of uh, the people that are participated to the podcast uh, to also come and then to also uh, get uh, some um, highlights, if I can say, in terms of what happened for them the last two years. Because yeah, this, epi this podcast has now nearly two years. In December, in reality, it will be two years. But the idea of today is really to see what was the journey since the last two years. So if I can start by myself, so since the last two years that I made the podcast, so first I was employed by, um, by a big company. Uh, then I decided to go through my own career, so to open my own consultancy firm, uh, which is working really great. A lot of uh, manufacturers and customers are really um, trusting what I'm doing, so it's really also a great thing. So it means that uh, what, I, what I'm uh, doing and the decision that I took was really great. And um, I decided to continue the podcast because for me it was really um, something that was helping me also to get more networking, but also to learn because people think maybe that all the topics that we discuss on the podcast, I know them by heart, but no, it's not true. So I'm learning also a lot by talking with those people that are uh, on my podcast that I'm interviewing, um, by providing also some questions that I have, but maybe you have also, so that it makes it like really a learning journey for me and also maybe for you that are listening to this episode. I want also to thank all the people that were um, uh, listening to the episodes because uh, without them, uh, this journey would not have been the same. Uh, I received a lot of messages from people that said to me, Munir, you helped me a lot. This podcast helped me a lot to put a compliance medical device on the, car, on the market or uh, to um, grow also within their company, which is something that I, I'm really happy and I'm really happy to hear that because it's a motivation for me also. So um, as I said, so let's try now to celebrate that. And as I said, I have invited some people to help me. So we have five guests today that will be sharing with you uh, their highlights for the last two years. And the first one is Eric Volbrecht. So Eric is a famous lawyer, so partner at Axon Lawyers. And he participated many times to the podcast. Uh, so he helped us really to understand the situation. We had him a lot of time on discussing about the um, MDR uh, political situation with the EU Commission, the delay also. So it was really uh, somebody that really helped me a lot to understand the context and I hope uh, this will help you a lot also. So today Eric will talk uh, to us about his journey. He will talk also about his book because he's writing a book. We are talking about that since a long time with him and I hope as soon as he will be able to release that he can come also to uh, present it during the one episode of the podcast. So let's, let's uh, hear what Eric has to say to you. Well, hello everyone. This is uh, Eric Vollebrecht in the 100th episode of the uh, uh, Medical Device Made Easy podcast, a podcast that I've uh, participated in uh, in uh, several uh, instances with uh, really enjoying the, the positive energy that I think uh, Monier always brings to, uh, to, the, uh, to the medical devices uh, um, knowledge base. Uh, I can really recommend this podcast. I like it a lot. I learn stuff myself. And Monier asked me uh, for the occasion of this 100th uh, podcast, uh, could I say anything about, uh, about let's say, uh, what has happened to me in, uh, in, in this time? And, well, I could only think about this, this uh, and, and related to the MDR and the IVDR, of course, because that's what the podcast uh, is about. And the, the subject I picked, because I've only got five minutes to, uh, to talk about this, and that's, that's quite short uh, for me, is that I wanted to take you through a journey that I've uh, been on myself uh, during, uh, during the, uh, the MDR and the, uh, 
and especially also the, the COVID-19 uh, crisis that we are having right now. Because what I quickly found out with the MDR, and that's I think also, uh, it's something that I try to, uh, a hole that I try to fill with my blog on medicaldevicesleagal.com that I write. But I think also uh, something that Monir has done really well with his uh, podcast is there is such a dearth of, uh, uh, of uh, knowledge about the MDR. It's still really quite a journey, uh, a puzzle, if you will, or rather uh, a book that is being written as we go. Because as you will remember, the MDR, uh, when it came out, uh, when it was published, it was basically, uh, it was a framework, but the framework was incomplete. The, uh, the commission needed to adopt a lot of uh, implementing acts uh, still. We were lacking a lot of guidance. The infrastructure needed to be set up, such as Udemed, expert groups, uh, reference laboratories, all that stuff. All that stuff still needed to be uh, needed to find its way. And what I found is that people in the medical devices industry um, were also on a journey trying to make sense of all of this. And um, in the time that it was possible still, uh, because we are in the, in the Netherlands anyway, in, in the middle of a second wave of COVID infections that, that still prevents travel. In the old days, we would travel quite a lot and we would meet and uh, um, I miss that very much because now I am sitting in my office uh, uh, as, a, uh, as a Star Trek uh, geek with my uh, Star Trek Next Generation uh, background. It's the best I have to offer, basically, so I can make uh, Star Trek jokes to still uh, make uh, life interesting. But what I decided to do and in the meantime, uh, because I save such a lot of uh, time on travel, is to put that in a book. Because as I said, the MDR you can really see as a book that is being, uh, that's in the process of being uh, written uh, and becoming more and more complete. So that's what I did. I started to write my own book about uh, about the MDR, the IVDR, a, a fully annotated version that is uh, nearing completion uh, at the moment, which I hope to be able to also uh, share uh, with, uh, with the market uh, soon, and which I hope uh, will uh, have a very uh, positive contribution, uh, just uh, like this podcast and uh, the blogs that I've been writing. And of course, uh, it's, yeah, uh, I hope that also, and that's really something I miss very much, that the, the personal engagement of being able to meet each other uh, at conferences and meetings and to exchange information in person, because it, it always feels so much nicer if you can uh, pick up on the body language, if you can have a drink with somebody and discuss, okay, how have you been uh, working on this, rather than exchanging uh, knowledge uh, in, in, yeah, with such a formal and distant medium. So I hope for all of you that you stay safe, also that you stay sane, of course, in these uh, times. And uh, I wish you a lot of uh, good luck and, of course, a lot of uh, successful and interesting uh, knowledge uh, transfer, uh, among others, uh, through this uh, interesting uh, podcast okay so thank you eric uh, so he called us from his spaceship apparently from what you see uh on the background so uh thank you eric so yeah as, as we as i've said so as soon as the book will be out let's uh, let's talk about that but uh, i think yeah, it was really a great journey also for for him Okay, our next guest now is Basil Accra. So Basil Accra also had a great journey because he was working for a notified body and now he's having his own uh, consultancy firm. Uh, so Basil uh, was participating to the podcast. I also have interviewed him once when I was um, at a Topra event. Uh, so we talked about how to become an, uh, a notified body auditor. So uh, yeah, so Basil has also a great highlight in terms of his journey and it was really interesting and it was really also providing uh, a lot of uh, a lot of messages in terms of to not give up and to uh, move forward to uh, do what you really think is is the great thing to do so let's listen to basil Accra. happy 100 episodes for the podcast which is uh 
a service which was provided by Munir, and I'm happy to be with him today uh, to celebrate with him on this actually special uh, number that he reached with his podcast. He asked me to speak about what happened the last two years, and I'm uh, looking back, and I remember in 2018, I was sitting in my chair at the notified body trying to understand how we can get this MDR and IVDR designation, which are critical for the business, for the future of the healthcare system in Europe. And today, um, I'm looking to back and I'm trying to understand what happened actually in the last years with regard to the regulations. And a lot of things happened. Uh, we have now um, finally some notified bodies who are designated. Uh, we got designated when I was at the suit uh, as a notified body under the medical device regulation, which led to a big celebration as well. Then uh, everyone, every stakeholder started looking on how we can get the guidance finally published to answer the major questions, uh, such as the questions on reporting, such as the questions on sufficient clinical evidence. And uh, then we were like reaching the date of application and everyone was really in, in a fear what will happen, trying to do his best to reach uh, actually uh, the target to achieve what is expected in a period of, let's say, limited capacity, uh, overloaded resources and a really tough time. And suddenly we got COVID-19, which is a surprise, a negative surprise for everyone. Um, and we needed to manage again and try to find a, a solution to move from the old system to the new system. And delay happened surprisingly in a way that nobody assumed that this will happen. Nevertheless, now we are again uh, some months before the date of application. And with the date of application, which was in May 2020, I promised personally that this would be the date that I will introduce a change. And I kept my promise uh, uh, contradictory to, to the legislators in Europe that promised us a lot, but they never kept the promise. I kept the promise to say, I'm going to do a change with the date of application. And the change was actually to move from the notified body activities to move to no another side and try to help industry and stakeholders, including notified bodies, preparing for the regulation and implementing the regulation, understanding the guidance that were drafted at the different uh, levels, including the medical device coordination group guidance documents that were drafted with the help of the stakeholders, to understand how to read them, because the ones who wrote such guidance, they know why they wrote the sentence, but the ones that are reading the guidance are not understanding the expectation. So I think the last two years, a lot of things happened. And personally, I, I see myself now after two years, uh, seeing where we are, what we have achieved. We achieved a lot, but we didn't achieve actually the final target. And the final target is still ongoing because there is a lot of, uh, let's say, changes that we can expect in the upcoming months, in the upcoming years. And we should be, all of us, collaborating towards the smooth implementation of both regulations. Great, thank you, Basile. So thanks for this uh, th for this message, uh, and I hope this will help also a lot of a lot of people. Okay, so uh, let's now move to the next guest, which is uh, Stefan Bolleininger. So Stefan, you know him also was a lot of time on the podcast. He also was a lot of time also on the medical device school uh, episodes of the podcast, uh, also on the live session. So he helped a lot. Uh, to also uh, share, if I can say, knowledge in terms of uh, the transition to the UMDR. So uh, Stefan today is uh, trying to help us to understand uh, what was his journey. And what I can say is the fact that it is learning, learning, learning. So let's share to Stefan. Happy 100 EasyMedicalDevice.com podcast. I was asked to give a few of my highlights. What was my highlight with UMDR? Okay, when you look into a new regulation, you learn. My highlight is that I constantly learn, constantly improve because the knowledge I gained today is not completely valuable next day. So tomorrow I will have new knowledge. So that is with a, you need a good foundation, but then you improve day by day by day. That's a cool thing. That was a cool thing. My highlight from the last, yeah now three years with many audits is that I get every aspect again is a challenge or I get that aspect validated. And this is a highlight because we see 
all the system with MDD system, you don't have that. You have knowledge. That knowledge is fixed. You only have variations, but now you can recreate yourself with an own knowledge. And that is what I have as my personal cool highlight. So thank you, Stefan. Thank you for the happy <laughs> episode. <laughs> so yeah, so thank you for that. So uh, yeah, as, as Stefan said, so learning, learning, learning is something that is really uh, important. So I like to learn. So let's continue to do some learning also on this podcast. Okay, my next guest now is uh, coming from Tuf Sud. A notified body. Um, so uh, it is Martin Witt. So Martin participated to one of my uh, episodes of the podcast and he accepted uh, to also tell us what his, was his journey since the last two years. Uh, and it's important also to hear that uh, related to the fact that he's from Tuf Sud. So he, 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 this is the journey also that happened at some notified bodies like what Basil Acro also told us before. So let's hear uh, the message from Martin Witt. Happy 100th anniversary on the episodes of Easy Medical Devices to you, Monia. Um, and as you asked me to provide you with some insight on the MDR and the last two years and how that uh, correlated to my personal things, um, I'd like to give you the following uh, insight into what the last two years were for me. Um, so the last two years were driven mainly on activities related to the MDR and specifically um, the lots of questions coming up and the interpretations notified bodies currently have and had in the past and will in future have that was a very interesting and challenging uh, situation to me. Um, in, it was very interesting to also see and go to clients and talk and discuss with them the MDR approaches and what we think um, is required from an MDR perspective and actually that brought me to so many places in the last couple of years that I was uh, I'm really thankful for being in this this business also and I think it's a once in a lifetime experience to completely get a new regulation maybe it's a two times in a lifetime uh, thing that happens but um, this is a very big thing and the information need was huge and the traveling connected with it was huge and it actually brought me to places where I believe I wouldn't have traveled without the MDR and um, that actually provided me also with uh, a lot of insights into different cultures in interpretation also on regulation uh, crazy new food and uh, I, I think this is this is just a very good and for me personally also a very uh, nice situation in which I was. And I think by helping the uh, community with uh, information provided through videos and podcasts, we will continue on doing this activity. And I'm happy to now be more or less in charge of, of taking care of this. Okay, so thank you, Martin. Really, uh, a great, uh, a great testimonial. So, uh, yeah, traveling is also a great thing uh, during those type of uh, journey uh, because uh, you have to meet a lot of people. You have to help them also to interpret uh, the messages from the regulators, <laughs> which is also something that everybody is struggling actually. So, it's good that we have people that are going and trying to educate and also uh, to help interpret the messages from from the regulators. Okay, so the next guest now uh, and my last guest is uh, the guru of Udamed so it is Richard Hulian so Richard uh, is uh, helping a lot of manufacturers to understand how Udamed will be uh, will be working so he's having also some trainings so he'll provide also uh, his journey because he was working for the EU Commission and now he's having his own business so uh, so it's also something that is great to make this move and to see that within two years a lot of things are also changing so let's hear the message from Richard Hulian. Happy 100th episode to the podcast. I first met Munir in 2019 after I had left the European Commission. I took part in his 25th episode, which was on Udamed. After I left the Commission in April 2019, I was stunned at the lack of knowledge that companies had around Udamed in the public. When I was with the Commission, the impression that we were given, or the impression that I had at least, was that everybody knew about Udamed, everybody knew about MDR, everybody was going to be all prepared to deliver their data to Udamed. But when I left and started talking with companies, this was, the, uh, this was a very different reality. 
And for this episode, Monair asked me to come up with some personal experiences over the last 18 months just to explain my journey and how, it, how Udemed and MDR affected me and my, my professional life. So training. When I started talking with companies first, they were all going, oh yeah, Udemed, you know, we understand about Udemed. But when I tried to explain to them the level of information, the level of data that we're going to have to provide, most of these companies, they just glazed over. They didn't understand what I was talking about. And I thought I was pretty good at talking, as most of you could agree. So I offered to put together some training. And I'm not a trainer. I've never been a trainer. Um, I didn't, first of all, appreciate how much work was going to involve in putting together the training. So several companies said, yes, yes we would absolutely love it. So I started putting together a training session. It took me nine weeks, weekends, evenings, day and night. And that was coming at the training with a huge amount of knowledge. Quite a daunting task. And when I started doing the, the initial training sessions and people were coming along, we had one guy that turned up, a nice guy from the US, I think it was Texas he was from. He turned up with 18 questions and he asked me first thing in the morning, when can I ask the questions? And my heart skipped a beat. I thought, oh no, someone's going to turn up with things that we cannot answer. So uh, towards the end of the day, he hadn't asked the questions. So I stopped and I asked, you know, do you have these questions to answer? He said, no. He says, you've taken care of everything during the training, which was a fantastic boost to confidence. So everything was ticking along nicely. We were doing lots of training courses, most of them, actually all of them at the time in person. And most would have been held in Brussels. Then the new commission came in. Then they transferred Udemed from one side of the road to the other and gave it to a different DG. People were leaving the team. There was then all of a sudden, an announcement of a delay. Everything went quiet. Our training was still continuing, but all the consultancy calls that we were getting, all the questions we were being asked, it just died off. It was only maybe six or eight weeks, but it was a very quiet and trying time, as you can imagine, when you're trying to set up a business. So then things started picking up again, and we had several training sessions at the start of the year. We were in Tutlingen in Germany. We did a presentation in, in Barcelona and things like that, and came back to Ireland, and then we were ready to go to Sweden for the next training session. COVID-19. Everything stopped. Everything was put on hold. So we ended up following the requests from the, the, the lovely people that came along in Sweden. They asked, could we put it online? So again, didn't have too much of experience on this. Um, so we pushed it all online. The training sessions since have been a huge success. We've actually split it from one full day to two half days, which has been greatly appreciated from people. But while the training is intense and while there's just a ridiculous amount of information to have to get across, people love it. Uh, no, obviously it's not going to be their first choice. I'm sure they'd prefer to go party. But considering this is part of their business, considering it's going to be part of their lives for many years to come, the people who finish the training, they are so satisfied with the level of information that's been given to them. And for me, it makes it, it, makes it all worthwhile. It makes... Joe, I'm, del I'm delighted to be able to help people. I'm delighted that it works out well for them. But I have one, one more little piece to add to this on my personal MDR Udemed journey for the last 18 months, our software. We always had the intention of building a lot of software. And we always had the intention of building software that was going to help companies. And that wasn't going to rip them off because let's be honest, Udemed's an expense that most of you guys don't want, but unfortunately you have it. So... We had, I'd always designed the software. I'd had it ready to start coding it, getting moving on that. But we never had the time because of all the traveling around. Even to get the information to the teams to do it was difficult. But because of the lockdowns, because we're not allowed to travel anymore, we've had the time to work on this. And considering I, I was running the Udemed teams within the commission and I thoroughly enjoyed it, I had a great time. But now I'm doing the same thing, but we're creating our own software. There's a huge element of pride involved in it. And because this is going to help so many companies, big and small, there's a real sense of pride, 
pride in what in watching this build slowly the different delivery stages passing the testing honestly on a personal basis it gives me a fantastic sense of pride and a really good feeling we're going to be launching this at the end of november and like i said i believe it'll be of great benefit to the end users but over the last 18 months since that podcast 25 now at the 100th which is a fantastic achievement by monair and he's he's kept people very well informed it's been an absolutely fantastic journey. I'm really looking forward to continuing both with One Ear and with the, the rest of the medtech industry and helping people and training them and software, etc. So, One Ear, congratulations. You have done a wonderful job. Thank you very much. Great, Richard. Thank you for that. So, yeah, it was really, I think, a great journey. Uh, coronavirus is hitting in the middle, but uh, we have to adapt. So it's something that is also uh, important for, for us. OK, so um, as you have heard, um, the journey of each of the people were a bit different. Uh, each of you have their own um, thinking about how the last two years happened. If you have some messages if you want also to share with us your journey so don't hesitate uh, to send some comments on the youtube channel or uh, on the linkedin uh, so don't hesitate to contact me also if you have any uh, great uh, message also to provide uh, i am also inviting a lot of people to contact me if they have some uh, topics that they want also to share on the podcast because uh, this is also the object for this podcast is to share messages share learning and help people to get more confident when they are placing a medical device on the market so don't hesitate to contact me at info at easymedicaldevice.com and continue please to like the videos on youtube to provide the messages on your uh, podcast provider so apple podcast uh, spotify google podcast just to say that you like this podcast uh, so that the other people that are looking for a great podcast to listen are coming and uh, listening to this one so thank you really thank you for that and uh, so i'll meet you again next week so as uh, since the last year every week i'm releasing releasing a podcast episode so i, I will talk to you again next week i mean i will share with you something next week and uh, what i want also to share at the end here is just the fact that uh, the podcast was also nominated for the top pro award in the section communication and we'll have the results on november 19th uh, this year so 2020 i hope we'll make it and we can win because the objective is not that i win it's really we win all together and that we can spread the message uh, with this podcast that uh, yes you can put compliant devices on the market just by following some simple rules okay so thank you everybody thank you for following this podcast thanks for all your messages and uh, talk to you soon so i wish you a really nice day Bye.